Hello, everyone. This time I want to talk about something that's really useful just about any time you want to scale things up above a minimum implementation in Factorio. That is, the use of balancers, as well as a few not balancers that I will dub crossbar switches in light of their similarity to the actual network hardware of the same name. These mechanisms are available as soon as the first logistics research has been completed, giving access to underground belts and, more importantly, splitters. For the sake of clarity, let me first establish a few terms and how I will use them. Inputs will refer to the belt connections feeding into a mechanism. Outputs will refer to the belt connections leaving a mechanism. Supply will refer to the total rate of items available to flow on the input belts into the mechanism. Demand will refer to the empty space or total rate of potential consumption of items leaving the mechanism on the output belts. When we grow beyond the most basic factories in Factorio, perhaps first noticed when your ore demand exceeds a single yellow belt of output from your initial mining patches, we run into one of the core challenges of belt routing, the N to M distribution problem, or how do I route N quantity of belt inputs to M quantity of belt outputs, especially when those numbers are not the same. We're working in terms of belt connections here, not specifically belt bandwidth. However, the N or M belt count may well be dictated by bandwidth. You may find the N to M distribution problem when drawing outputs off of your mining patches, distributing supplies to or from cargo wagons and your trains, and generally any time you interface with a resource bus or otherwise need to distribute supply to specific production layouts. Any solution that we come up with should be tolerant to back pressure, that is, when your supply exceeds demand and the entire belt system fills to its capacity with items on the belts. Fortunately, Factorio gives us the tools to easily avoid systems that could seize up or break under this condition. When I come across discussion about solving this or similar problems on the internet, what I usually see is people reach for belt balancers as a solution. These balancers are generally pre-made and well-known blueprints to the community that do as the name suggests. At minimum, they balance supply on the inputs across the outputs. There are several other features that are variable to the balancer in question. While these are possibly well-known already, they will be relevant later. Here's the rundown. Universal balancers will always balance supply across the open output belts even when some outputs are blocked. That is, even when some outputs are blocked, all open outputs will receive an equal portion of the supply. Throughput unlimited balancers do not internally bottleneck no matter how many outputs are blocked. So long as supply is greater than or equals demand, all demand will be met regardless of how it is distributed across the outputs. Lane balanced balancers work across individual lanes rather than whole belts. Input balanced balancers will also balance demand across the inputs, which is notably not inherent to all balancers. Balancers will also sometimes require a minimum belt tier, though this is unlikely to be much of a concern for progression, as the only limiting symptom of an insufficient belt level is the maximum length of an underground belt, so the balancers have to be of rather significant size for this to become a problem to begin with. Balancers do generally solve the problem. At the core of the issue, the required multiplexing of any input to any output occurs, but whether they satisfy the requirements of the situation with full context depends on your balancer. Throughput unlimited balancers are generally going to be the most useful. So long as supply meets or exceeds demand, they will be fully tolerant to fluctuations in demand, even though at this point we're not really balancing anything. Most of the time, this is probably all that we care about. Universal balances preserve their ability to balance for any N to M ratio, where N and M are equal to or smaller than the balancer's inputs and outputs, respectively. This makes them particularly useful for situations where N and M are not equal and or are not powers of two. The one real case where balancing definitely matters is for train stations, and thus a universal balancer may be appropriate. Ensuring that all cargo wagons load close to evenly helps train throughput and enables the use of buffer chests without risking an uneven load of thousands of items sitting in some of those chests while the last wagon on the train waits to load from scratch. I will talk about how I handle train stations in a later video. Input lane balancing allows you to protect lane balance production from non-lane balance consumption. This prevents possible bottlenecks and even deadlocks. Now for my favorite answer to the end-to-end -end routing problem. Crossbar switches. In fact, they exist explicitly as a solution to the end -to end routing problem. I do wonder why I don't see them in the wild much at all. Even for their trade-offs versus balancers, I like them quite a lot. Crossbar switches, as a piece of networking equipment, used to literally have all their inputs laid over all their outputs in a grid-like configuration. The idea is that every input could be directly connected to any output or set of outputs. Factorial belts are a little bit weird compared to that, but the principle still holds. 
Every input has an independent set of connections to every output and vice versa. Unlike balancers, all crossbar switches, properly built, are throughput unlimited. As they generally don't use bridges, or very short ones for some designs, there is no minimum belt here for the designs that I will show. As it turns out, there are a few different categories, not just styles, that I have come up with. Many of them do require input-output priorities on the splitters to avoid bottlenecks. First are the true switches, and I call them that simply because they most closely resemble the structure of an actual crossbar switch out of all of the variations that I have. These are the only switches that might use an underground belt, and to be a true switch, they require that splitting and merging the belts are performed by separate splitters. They should generally be composable with a single repeated unit, which makes for a grid-like layout. This is perhaps the easiest switch to visually comprehend, fully representing the input and output lines with the switch as well, but it is the least compact. True switches also do not require priorities to be set in the splitter inputs and outputs, unlike the other designs that I'll show. I'm not going to get into how to build these, however, as they aren't particularly useful compared to the other versions. Such a switch does allow a belt bus to pass through, though. Next, the compact switches may even look familiar. Perhaps you've already done this with the supply line in your factories. They're convenient because you can pull off an arbitrary number of belts from a belt bus of any size. You can use them to pull off either side of the bus and even inject supplies back onto the bus if you want to go crazy with them. The grouped nature of the splitters involved still allow for easy visual comprehension, and obviously the belt bus can pass through as well. These are, in my view, the most versatile and widely applicable crossbar switches. They're also pretty straightforward to build. First, there is an input and an output form of the compact switch. I have a pre-built input form on the right. These are more or less meant to be built over a bus, though the input form could instead be the genesis of the bus. So let's place the bus. To make the switch, we just place a diagonal row of splitters from the top downward as we go along the belt direction. The number of splitters will be equal to the number of belts in the bus for each belt we draw off. After hooking up the outputs, we need to set the priorities to prefer the furthest input and the closest output to our output belts. This prevents bottlenecking due to the default behavior of splitters. We just build a line of splitters like this for every output belt that we want, and we're done. Do note that the input switches must be spaced further apart because the belts won't turn into the first splitter properly with the minimum spacing. The last is one that I didn't realize was an option until recently doing some experimentation for this video. I've called them diamond switches, but they are derived from a crossbar grid that is more specifically a diagonal parallelogram. The length of each side is dictated by the input and output counts. Furthermore, we can remove an unnecessary corner from the switch to save some splitters, making the simultaneously the cheapest and most visually obtuse switch by far. You can build an end-to-end -end diamond switch in line to mux belts on a bus if that is ever necessary. However, in any other case, the bus does not pass through. While I do use the simpler compact switch for a train station, given its linear and bus passing nature, these diamond switches seem to be the best choice for condensing the outputs of a mining patch, which only require an end to end conversion. These are relatively easy to build, but not immediately straightforward. First, we place splitters in a diagonal rectangle defined by the number of inputs and outputs. In this orientation, the first line is a descending diagonal line of splitters equal to the number of inputs. Then, the other side is an ascending diagonal line of splitters equal to the number of outputs, corner included. After that, fill in the rectangle. The input and output belt should be shifted all the way towards the tip, the corner splitter at the bottom here. I haven't proven if the input priorities need to be set, but the output priority must be set, closest to the tip, to the bottom in this orientation. Finally, every splitter that reaches past the furthest belt, whether that is on the input or output side, can be removed. Just fill in the gaps with belts and the switch will still work. Here you can see how a not really a diamond anymore switch can be inline on a bus when the input and output counts are the same. As is their purpose, crossbar switches all multiplex their belt connections appropriately and without limiting throughput. They do not inherently balance the outputs, but it is very easy to build arbitrary end-to-end switches. Notably, putting a lane-level balancer in every one of the inputs or every one of the outputs allows a crossbar switch to connect any input lane to any output lane. This makes, basically, a lane-level crossbar switch. Each lane balancer should be input balanced when connecting lane balanced production to non-lane balanced consumption to prevent possible bottlenecks and deadlocks. Okay, at this point it might seem like I'm trying to knock on balances with this video, but I'm really not. 
While I do find the Switches easier to purpose build and comprehend, I can't even pretend that the Switches are smaller when directly compared. And they certainly aren't cheaper, in terms of splitters that is. At the same time, balancers only actually balance when demand exceeds supply. Underfeeding your factory means the choice between balancers or crossbar switches is moving the problem around, not solving it. From what I can find, the apparent popularity of using balancers over other solutions to multiplex belts seems to be a bit of a holdover from the days before splitters could be set with priority inputs and outputs. But that feature has been around since before Factorio's 1.0 release. Train stations are the notable exception for the use of balancers, yet I still stubbornly use a switch for my stations, modified with circuitry to turn the switch into a universal balancer. Here's how that works real quick. The first output belts after the switch are connected and all contents summed up. The belts immediately after the scan belts are enabled when all of the former belts are full. That is, the sum of eight items for each straight bolt output, curved belts do not work. The one type of balancer that I don't have a replacement for is a lane balancer. An input balanced lane level balancer, specifically, is a bit of a game changer if you weren't building factories with the whole resource flow explicitly planned out. They aren't necessary in every case, but chances are that your train cargo drop-off stations will thank you for balancing their outputs and will more consistently provide the items that you are expecting. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Maybe even leave a comment and let me know what you think, and if I missed anything important. I have a few more videos ideas already lined up for the base Factorio game, and then I'll see what I find in Space Age. After that, I do have plans for other games as well. I hope to see you there.